Welcome to this Kickstarter session. This is the first lecture in the series of lectures, in a series of lectures on sets. Uh, the language of sets is fundamental in modern mathematics. Just about all mathematical facts or theorems are expressed in terms of sets, relations and functions. So it is important to be familiar with them. Everything here is very, very easy, but somehow, in my experience, this poses a great barrier to entry to higher mathematics. Uh, and also, before we proceed, I want to mention that we will not be going into formal set theory and logic, because I don't know formal set theory and logic. All I know is what is known as naive set theory or the informal approach to set theory, which is more than sufficient to get into higher mathematics and uh, yeah you you don't need anything more than that to even obtain the highest possible degree in maths so with that preamble let us start what is a set i don't know i don't think i can properly define a set and the proper definition will be discussed in, in a book on formal set theory. And I discourage you from getting into it. Right now, it is enough to just have an informal definition, which is that a set is an unordered collection, quote unquote, collection of well-defined, whatever that means, objects. So we were trying to define a set and uh, we have a sentence which has more undefined things than the thing that we were trying to define but still it hints to something and uh, the best way to understand what we are trying to say is through examples so this is a set so when we when we talk about a set we draw curly braces and the things inside the curly braces are called the objects of the set or the elements of a set and here the set here is is the you know the first three natural numbers right so this is a set it's a well-defined collection because it's clear what the elements are there is no ambiguity about them and it's unordered so we will get get to this this what do we mean by unordered but uh, let's see another example so here uh, the set is your you know first three natural numbers and our first two letters of the english alphabet so that's this set and uh, this is another set so this is the set of all the planets in the solar system so mercury venus earth mars jupiter saturn uranus and neptune pluto was kicked out of this list some years ago when I, when I was a child, Pluto was included in this list, but uh, now it's not, as far as I know. So there are only eight entries here. All right. And now here is something that is not a set. So all beautiful planets in the solar system. And this is not a set because beautiful is a subjective experience and hence not well defined. So. So this adjective of well-definedness is important, right? Because a planet may be beautiful to one and ugly to another. All right. So let's go ahead. So this is the notion of belongingness. And this is basically a defining or, you know, a, a, yeah, let me not, let me not say much about that. So, so here is the thing given a set, and an object or element, whatever that means, uh, one can ask if the object or element is a member of the set or belongs to the set. One can ask this question and the answer will always be yes or no. So what do I mean by that? It's, this, this may seem like some very ambiguous or strange thing to say, but here is what I'm trying to say. So suppose X is some set. For example, you can take this set, one, two, three and a be some object now a could be anything a could be a number or a letter or a fruit or a planet you know just anything any well-defined object and now one can ask 
if A is a member of X, right? And if it is a member of X, then we say A is an element of X or we say A belongs to X or we say A is in X or we write this. So, so for instance, I mean, we will look at examples, but for instance, suppose this is our set X and uh, two is our object, the number two, then two is a member of X, right? Two is sitting here. So in that case, we say A is an element of X or A belongs to X or A is in X, or we use this notation. This is a convenient notation here. This, this is like an E, kind of like an E, but it's curly. So let me draw that again. It's like this. And if you know LaTeX, uh, this is how you generate that in LaTeX, that symbol. But if you don't know LaTeX, then forget about it. Okay. Oops, sorry, sorry about that. What did I do? Yeah. So, so if A is not a member of X or not an element of X, then we write a and then we slash out this this guy and x so so these are just some notations rather than saying things in words when we write a proof this is very very convenient all these things because every time writing things in words takes long time and it's tiring all right so let's see some examples so Mercury belongs to the set of all the planets in the solar system, right? Pluto does not belong to the set of all the planets in the solar system, as we commented earlier. And uh, in, no in notation, if you want to use this notation, one is an element of this set, four is not an element of this set. All right. Here are some standard notations which are used frequently. So this denotes the set of all the natural numbers. So what we do is we first draw an N and then we draw a vertical line adjacent to that. We just don't write a simple N. This is, this is a special kind of N. And again, in LaTeX, you can use, I think there are many options, but Think this this should this should generate that or something looking like that okay uh, this denotes the set of all the integers so it, it includes the whole numbers uh, you know it includes the number zero as well as the negative integers so this is a convenient symbol this uh, is is used to denote the set of all the rational numbers this is used to denote the set of all the real numbers. Let me draw that again. So it's similarly, you draw draw an R and then you place a vertical line here. Here you draw a Q and then you kind of cut it a little bit. Okay. Uh, so this is set of all the real numbers and this is the set of all the complex numbers. Frequently used notations. And now this is very important, roster and the set build form. How to express a set basically. So suppose S be the set of all the even natural numbers. So how would we express it? So this is an expression. This is a perfectly fine uh, way to describe the set S, but this is in words. How do we express it in a more succinct fashion in, in symbols? So there are two options. One is the roster form and the other is the builder form. Rather than defining what is the roster form, what is the builder form, let me just give an example. So in roster form, that thing will be written this way, two, four, six, dot, 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 or maybe you can write more, but let me just stop at six. So this would be the expression in the roster form. So basically in the roster form, you jot down all the elements of the set S the best you can. Since this is an infinite set, you cannot possibly write down all the elements, but you do the best you can. In builder form, you are much more precise. So in builder form, you say, so, okay, so this is the, you know, one way to write it in builder form. 
So all those n's such that first of all n is a natural number and 2 divides 2 divides n so this is one way to write it in builder form so you are basically saying exactly what are the things that lie in the set s those n's which are first of all natural numbers and which are even so you could also write n is even that is perfectly fine that is also fine but i have written it this way so this is the builder form now in the roster form the problem is you are relying on the reader to interpret this this the same way you intend to you know, so you 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 are basically asking the reader to read your intention it is not clear that the next number here is 8 and then 10 and so on it is not clear because for instance somebody could look at this and think of something like the fibonacci series 6 is the sum of 4 and 2 so maybe he might think that the next number is 6 plus 4 so it's 10 and then 16 and so on so that's the problem with roster form it is not precise a uh, roster form can be precise if s were a finite set in that case you can in principle write down all the elements of s and then nobody can question uh, as to the ambiguity of s but uh, the alternative is the builder form and this is what we generally use whenever we have an infinite set this is the way to go even if you have a big finite set suppose you have a set with 100 elements you're not going to write down all of them so you you use builder form but having said that we also frequently use the roster form and uh, no confusion is caused unless somebody is going to play nasty okay so so much about that yeah so another way to write the same thing is the following this is also also the roster form so we kind of just we can club some of it before this uh, before this symbol so yeah i should i should mention what is this double dot this is this is read as such that so n such that these two conditions are satisfied so that is the template of the builder form you write a symbol and then you just prescribe all the condition all the conditions that the symbol satisfies and it is convenient to you know take some of the conditions before the such that it's completely fine so you may write n in n so what i mean all the natural numbers n such that 2 divides n this is another way to express the set in builder form and another point of notation instead of these two dots one sometimes may use a vertical line also that is also a notation right so i don't want to fully prescribe everything about the builder form and all that as you read more and more maths these things go into the background and you don't have to worry about them but this is the best i can do right now uh, we can look at more examples so suppose s is the set of all the positive integers or in other words natural numbers which are less than 100 so in the roster form in principle you can just express all of them but of course this is the economical way to do it and hopefully no one would get confused when you write it that what you mean is indeed the set of all the natural numbers less than 100 so yeah i say less than 100 so i can't include 100 i have to stop at 99 okay but in builder form it's much more precise you say all the natural numbers which are less than 100 right that's that's one way or um, you could say all n such that they are natural numbers and they are less than 100 both are fine all right uh, the set of all the rationals so we already saw that this is the symbol for the set of all the rationals but if somebody wants to uh, you know express it in a more fundamental way then you would say uh, all these numbers p by q where p is some integer q is some natural number 
So this is another way to express the set of all the rationals. Or even better would be, even better would be all those x maybe, all x's such that x is equal to, or I should say there exist. So let me write there exist. There exist uh, P and Q. There exist P in Z and Q in N such that X equals P by Q. This is another way, but I would, if I were to write, I would prefer this. Or I would just write the symbol because there is already a symbol present, a standard symbol present to denote this. All right. Let me end with some remarks. So a set may contain other sets. That's completely fine. The elements of a set may themselves be sets. For example, you can consider this set and there may not be any verbal way to capture what exactly this set has. It is what it is. So this is written in the roster form. And since there is no verbal way to capture it, there is there doesn't seem to be any good builder form for it. Anyway, so that's one example. Repeating an element when describing a set does not change anything. Redundancy is fine. So for instance, one, one, two, three is the same thing as that. So repetition is allowed when you're expressing things in a set. And uh, ordering. So we mentioned that a set is an unordered collection of well-defined objects. So this set is same as that set because changing the order doesn't do anything and two sets are equal if they have precisely the same elements so this set is not the same as that set because four four is an element of this guy but four is not an element of this guy and uh, finally the empty set deserves a special mention so empty set is the set which contains no elements it is a legitimate set Either this symbol is used or that symbol is used to denote the empty set. And uh, if, uh, you know, it may seem a little bit trippy, but this guy is not the empty set. This is the set which contains the empty set. So it may be a little bit trippy. In, in, in fact, some people express it like this. It's okay, but it throws me off when I see that. It's ugly. So yeah, I hope this is yeah this is the end for this lecture, and uh, we will continue our discussion with sets the next time. As usual, like, comment, share, subscribe, and thank you for listening.